grab a bottle or snap a tab. It's time for Antebrewum South Georgia Beer Report. South Georgia's first craft beer podcast with Ryan and Danny. This month we interview the guys from Big Oak Brewing, what will be Thomasville's first craft brewery. We discuss our favorite Thomasville beer spots and pound through a four-minute four-bomber detonation super tasting. Brought to you by Five Points Fine Wine and Spirits. To wrap it up, Ryan asked the Big Oak guys some silly questions in our Cask Me Another segment. I mean, really, what beer would the Thomasville Big Oak drink if it were alive? Make sure to catch us early next month on Wednesday, December 7th for an Antebrewum Berry Berry Beer a Day with Sour Carl. And don't forget to subscribe or follow us on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hey everybody, welcome to episode three of Antebrewum South Georgia Beer Report, where we will talk about Thomasville, and we have guests from... Big Oak Brewing. Hey, I'm Ryan. I'm one of your hosts. This guy, he forgot to say his name, was Danny. And we're here with the Big Oak guys. Would you care to introduce yourself? Jacob Odom, Ellie Glass. And we're here to talk about Thomasville today. Talk about some good South Georgia beer. So, but first, I, go for it. What you drinking? I am drinking Orpheus. I was worried about saying this name earlier. Sycophantes. Anyways, it's a fig sour. Uh, picked it up um, at Craft on Draft earlier today. It is fantastic. And this is not my second fig beer I've drinking in the last three days because I went down to Kickbacks at Jacksonville and had the Ardwolf um, Notorious FIG. Um, or is it just Notorious Fig? I think, but anyways. No, it's a pun on the wrapper. It's definitely FIG. Anyways, two fig beers, one week. By the way, I'm pretty awesome. sure it's Psycho Pahanties. Well, whatever it is is good. What you drinking? Totally naked. Oh, I just, no, the beer. And what you wearing? The beer. Um, no, totally naked, maybe later. Um, New Glarus is uh, totally naked. It's very nice. I'm enjoying it. On the New Glarus train, I have their 2016 Oud Brun, which is pretty awesome. Uh, by the way, thanks again to my mom for being now our only Patreon subscriber and for bringing these uh, New Glarus beers down from the Midwest. How about you, sir? Also drinking New Glarus, I have the Fat Squirrel. Um, Courtesy of your fridge. Thank you. Nice. Mom. <laughs> My pleasure. It's really good. It's a brown ale. <clears throat> we so should. We've got the whole gamut here. We got a sour, a couple sours, a brown, Pilsner. We're doing good to start off with. So who's uh, who's uh, running the ship? Paying for it. Okay. Sponsoring it. <laughs> <laughs> Paying for it. We'll use that term very loosely. Yeah, we have some of our same old sponsors to thank this week and a couple new ones. Thanks Great. to our Thomasville trip, which is amazing. So thanks again to Five Points Fine Wine and Spirits, uh, who are providing beer for one of everybody's favorite segments later. More on that in a bit. Daniel Opal from Opal Design, who uh, did our graphics and logo. Anybody needs a local graphic designer, hit him up. Amazing. And our two new sponsors, Liam's Ooh, in Thomasville. Love Liam's. Which was an amazing experience. But we'll talk more about that later. And last but certainly not least, Sweetgrass Dairy Cheese Shop. Both those places in Thomasville were fantastic. We're going to delve into those um, a little bit later, talk about our Thomasville trip. But both those places in Thomasville, are they, they are beer destinations for sure, not to mention food destinations. And Five Points, as always, is awesome. Um, I oh. drove through there with Tom. Um, Tom Tom was working the window, and um, you know he knows me. So he's like, hey, I got a new Barrel Age 1050 by Oscar Blues. Do you want a can? And like, yeah, yeah, he knew me. So, uh, but they, it's they good are to know awesome. that you're a, a regular at the local drive through liquor store, Ryan. <laughs> hey, it's a high quality drive through liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your average. <laughs> it's not your average. It's, it's not very often you go to a drive through liquor store and they stop you and say, hey, we have a new barrel aged Imperial Stout. This is true. That's I look like the guy, kind of guy that would probably want a you know, 12% barrel aged Imperial Stout, though. And you can go in without any pants on the drive-thru. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Totally naked. You had your totally. You had your you had your plaid shirt on, and who knows what else? Just don't bring the fat squirrel. Don't bring don't bring the fat squirrel or the sycophanties. Um, Psychopanties. Psychopanties. Uh, <laughs> well, we should mention uh, you talked about how um, most people will probably listen to this later. That's okay. Today is Small Business Saturday, and so 
you should go out and support these places. If you're watching live, go later when the podcast is over. Um, and if you use your American Express today on Small Business Saturday, you get double point, double points or double miles. I don't know anything about that, but you should definitely go help those small businesses, uh, not just our sponsors, especially our sponsors, but any small business. And uh, even if you listen to this, say, Sunday or Monday, call it Small Business Monday. Shop local, <laughs> drink local. Uh, that's what we're all about. So, again, thank you to our sponsors. And uh, I think it is time to talk about Big Oak Brewing out of Thomasville. Would you guys care to introduce Big Oak? Is it brewery? Brewing? What's the uh, name? Brewing. Okay. Brewing. All right. Um, yeah, go ahead. Tell us about Big Oak Brewing. So uh, this idea was born really a couple of years ago. Um, I had went to Props in uh, mm. Florida, mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite places still to this day. Yeah, I go there all. I have an orchestra gig in Destin, and I always go to Props. Fantastic. Um, and so my wife and I, we went uh, and had lunch there one day with some friends of hers that lived in Panama City at the time. And uh, we were sitting there, and uh, you know, just this kind of epiphany hit of looking around like. This is what Thomasville is missing. You know, we've got all this stuff at this point. You know, Bacchus is already full force in at this point. So we've got the wine. Um, I think Jen Creek was there. Now where it's uh, Farmer's Daughter instead. Mm -hmm. um, so the wine part was covered. Um, but now I started looking around. I was like, you know, it needs beer. That, that's, that's what it's missing. But, you know, under the culture of the community and all that, that, that's kind of the last puzzle piece of that wonderful downtown area. You're definitely uh, preaching to the choir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two people that live in Valdosta. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know. Although we don't even have wine. <laughs> you got to drive a ways to get, get to wine. Mm -hmm. Me being the go-getter that I am, I did nothing with it for about a year. Um, <laughs> and so at that point, I had, a, I had a bunch of other stuff going on in my life personally, and I just um, didn't take the time to pursue it. Well, back in uh, February, I'm getting on a... You know, I'm, I'm about to go on a trip to do something, and uh, I get a text out of the blue from Elliot. And Elliot just says, hey, you know, what do you know about starting a business? You know, he knows I got, a, I got the business background, went to school for it, all that good stuff. Um, so he, he just texts me and says, hey, what do, you, what do you know about starting a business? And I said, I don't know. It just, well, I, I know how to get you going, but it depends. What kind of business do you want to start? And that's when his response was, well, I'm looking at starting a brewery downtown Thomas. So I was like, okay. Hang on to that thought. I'm going to have to call you tomorrow once I get done with this trip, and uh, and we'll talk. And so we had a nice little phone conversation. Were you guys already friends before? Yes. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yeah. I met Jacob through my wife. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we weren't sure if you guys were related or just buddies. Or... Yeah, you know, um, I actually had some people, and um, we were hanging around Thomasville one night, and a friend of mine texted me out of the blue and said, I hate you right now. I was like, well, what, what, what did I do? And she said, you were in grassroots and didn't say anything to me. <laughs> I had been in all night. And they come to find out we run into the, to, to Patty and Elliot downtown, and it's like, oh my god. They saw, they saw Elliot, they didn't see me. Um, so yeah, I got in trouble for him being a jerk. Uh, essentially, it's That's going to happen a lot if you start a business together, I because think. Because you, you didn't say hey, hey to a random stranger. Um, my apologies. Yeah. yeah Get it right you. next time. Thank you for apologizing now. But no, and so we, from there, we, uh, we, we started you know, digging in, and that's how, that's how the journey started, essentially. Very good. Um, so, tell us, what is your going to be your beer focus? I know, well, let's step back. Where are you guys in the process of starting this brewery? So, currently, um, we are wrapping up, putting the final touches on the business plan. Um, I basically just have a couple of questions. I got to call the Department of Re Georgia Department of Revenue figure out how some mechanics of some taxes work and mm -hmm. call it a day. So literally I'm almost done. And um, we're structuring the investment vehicle right now and we're about to start seeking out investors. So we're, we're at the part where we've got two locations that we've, that we've looked at. We've discussed with the managers, owners of the buildings. I don't really want to discuss them right now. Um, of course, sir. Yeah, well, too well, early. Well, and it, it's, it's not necessarily too early. Is that one of those places has current tenants in it. And so for respect to that process, I just sure. try to avoid that. But we do have a couple of locations that we are looking at. We can always have you back when you uh, have some big announcements in the mm -hmm. future. Sure. Well, if your mom sends us beer again, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> she does that a lot. So, <laughs> so, so we're, uh, we're, we're in the process of finding investors. Um, you know, I've been working with one potential um, 
investor pretty closely to structure the investment vehicle, how this looks, you know, what, what kind of dividends do they maybe want to see, what kind of buyout at the end of this um, investment do they want to look at. So all that kind of stuff um, is what we're, what we're in the process of right now. You know, we've got an operating agreement put together, um, looking at a term sheet, and just trying to make sure that the operating agreement is also airtight, that it's not, that no one's going to get harmed in this, us or the shareholders. Yeah. I'll say you, um, <laughs> for, for starting a brewery, you seem to know your, your, your business ins and outs. So. Well, it's, you know, it's just, it's such a high risk venture mm -hmm. because as a business, it's a ton of capital up front. I mean, to, to, for the licensing process, you have to have your location on lease or bought and then your equipment at least on order, at least my understanding of the licensing process. As I recall, you have to have your entire floor plan set up yes. and ready to go. Yeah, wow. so you have to have, you know, depending on the size of your equipment, you have to have easily several hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. to get going off the right. ground. And so that was one thing, um, uh, you know, with, with the Georgia Beer Company, when they talk about it being a process and how it's taken, well, yeah, it's, it, it is a long process, and, and a lot of people don't understand what that process looks you're opening like, this weekend so. right yeah right <laughs> right <laughs> uh, not quite and so yeah it's it's a it is a very long process and a very long road to to get something like this going it's, it's a huge undertaking yeah. and it's a very huge undertaking for um for us especially um so yeah just trying to make sure that we know everything and that because we are bringing in outside investors you got to watch out for them you got to protect them uh, make sure that they don't get harmed because obviously we're we're going to do try and do right by them mm -hmm. but at the same time you know there's a lot of money so if play. you're uh driving around town right now listening to this podcast in your rolls royce and you just really wanted to uh invest in a brewery we know a couple <laughs> you know? breweries that you could help out so hit us up so let's jump down a couple questions because we're talking about financial support you guys had mentioned to us something about maybe in the future doing some sort of crowdfunding campaign. You want to talk about that? Yeah. You want to take that one? We're looking into starting a Kickstarter campaign um, so we can increase our equipment size to a uh, one barrel <coughs> um, pilot system. All right. So we're looking to get the ball rolling on that and hopefully have that going sometime maybe in February. Okay. Awesome. So this is going to be kind of your pilot system to start brewing all sorts of different, mm -hmm. different types of beers. Now what... What do you guys envision as the style brewery? You, you would be, you know, distributing real quick. Is it going to be more of a, a local type thing? What What do you guys see for Big Oak Brewery? In, in addition to that, I was thinking, what uh, what size is the eventual brewery? Are you thinking looking at about fifteen barrel setup, okay. um, capacity of around three thousand barrels a year. Um, so it'll be be big enough to be classified as micro, um, mm -hmm. and probably basically big enough. The target that I'm looking at in the way that I estimate the market for the Southwest Georgia, it probably would be enough to grab about 10% of their overall market is the way it's kind of how I'm looking at it. The mm -hmm. target market mm -hmm. we want to grab. And so, okay, if the target market is X amount of dollars, how much do I have to brew to reach yeah, X yeah. amount of dollars? And so trying to kind of build the capacity around that. So, uh, yeah, about 3,000 barrel capacity, 15. Um, barrel system uh, looking at us uh, our, our main target is going to be the distribution um, getting the kegs in the restaurants getting it out there we're not very interested in bottling and canning, canning at this point simply because those margins crush you yeah. out the door um, and, and the, unfortunately and like we said with GBC last month this is a topic for another entire podcast yeah. we can do that in December mm -hmm. um, Georgia makes it so hard for it's almost like they're encouraging you to be a distribution brewery because there's still these silly laws where you like kind of have a hard time buying beer to go. You can't really drink at the brewery. If you want to be able to sell pints, you have to have a bunch of food, which is like another entire business in and of itself. Right. Then you got to get restaurant people, you blah, 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 blah. So it's like, yeah, it's like it just makes sense almost to distribute. So yeah, to your point, to do a brew pub, you have to have at least 50% of your sales have to be food. So you can't, the majority of it can't be the beer. So you can't use a brew pub as a little shell company to work around the distribution right. system. Like they do in Indiana. Have you guys ever seen, um, like Sun King Brewery is a, is a pretty well-known brewery in Indianapolis. And you're required, you know what, there's not a certain percentage, but you're required to sell 
food products and non-alcoholic drinks is the law. And so their money, is, their, their menu is hilarious. You can get like pop tarts and then <laughs> they have like uh, powdered milk that they'll give you mixed with water because they have to sell non-alcoholic <laughs> beverages. So they have all this ridiculous stuff on their menu just that to stick ridiculous. it to them. And I think the prices are hilarious too. It's like 15 bucks for two Pop-Tarts or something, you know? It's like stuff nobody's ever gonna buy. Well, it depends on the Pop-Tart, man. If it's, mm. if it's a classic strawberry, I'll consider it. <laughs> what? You, you know, but... Fruit Pop-Tart, get out of my house! <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I mean, is 15 bucks just get you to the door? I mean, how much for toasting it? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta bring your own toaster. Did, did they have to invest? Did they have to invest? Weird Indiana laws. They had to invest in a toaster so they could sell these dang pop tarts. <laughs> Hopefully, they got the four hole one, not the, not the standard two hole. Because you know, they don't want two the, people. Order. They don't want the line shit, the line cook to back Gosh, up. Think about the turnaround though. If somebody did order a pop tart, but this isn't fast food. This is this is high quality dining. If they have a two hole toaster, I'm trusting that quality of the toaster. What is that? What if you can mix and match? It's like one strawberry no, and one cinnamon sugar, please. We're, we're not talking about a pop tart bar here. Let's, let's focus on the beer. <laughs> yeah. Let's focus on the I am beer. A, I am the master at getting off topic. By the way, that was I don't even remember what we were talking sort about. Sort of on topic. Oh, and whether you're going to distribute yeah. stuff. Yeah. What? What? Uh, so, what are some of uh, what are some of the beers that we're going to see out of Big Oak? Have you thought about core beers or or certain styles Black or anything? Chips or anything you're going to focus special? on? Um, our IPA is pretty popular. Um, I went. I wanted to go with something different than the main IPAs you come across with the pine resin. Um, so we do a lot of the orange tropical mm. um, aroma and flavors. Yep. So I have a single hop mosaic pale ale on tap right now. Um, we're also doing a, a brown ale, um, a hefeweizen. We have the IPA, and then we do a session, a session IPA. Nice. nice. The Good session standards. IPA also got really. Um, and we did our test take of recently at Liam's. Um, the session IP got really good uh, reaction out of folks as well. Uh, and as far as core beers go, I mean, we're looking at those for our first four core. But you know, like we were discussing a while ago off off um, podcast, we were saying, you know, I was talking about another brewery whose you know flagship wasn't even a mainstay. And that's mm-hmm. that's just one of those things. Like once you take one of these things to market, you never know what the market's right. going to do with it. Yeah. You know, I, I might be planning right now for the IPA to be the number one. Let's let's put it out there, and then we get out there and it's brown. That's what people want. Well, it's good to listen to the people, see what they want, because you, you, like you said, you never know. And it seems like in craft beer, there's waves of, you know, sessions are real popular. Then it's now everybody wants black IPA. Now everybody wants a peanut butter stout or whatever, you know. And so it's good to be to have those core beers that people are always going to want, like the IPAs and the browns, but also to be be thinking outside the box and to, to kind of re- ride the waves and there are there are here. surprises sometimes i know we're, we're good buddies with the guys that uh um opened arbor in jack's bay it's one of my favorite breweries and one of their core beers that's gotten super popular around town is their belgian pale ale. yeah that's the fig was it was the the notorious fig was the belgian pale ale i think with a bunch of figs added and which is crazy because you don't even have like the notorious FIG, which is a kind of a crazy beer. It's like a lightly what sour fig mm-hmm. Belgian beer. You didn't even have that at the brewery. You had that on tap at a local restaurant. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's great. It's great. Catches so, on. It catches on. We Did you try this true. before I kill it? By the way, I tried it. Okay. We received a lot of good feedback from our uh, tap pay- takeover at Liam's as well. So that's gonna help. I really us. wish I could have made that. Yeah, we need to. We need to definitely try some of your beer. Do you have any beer with you? Brought some uh, fall beer that I made um, a couple weeks ago. Yes. Um, I made it last minute on a weekend to take the family because I went to North Carolina last weekend. Oh, so I remember I, you saying that. So I took some up to them so they could try it. Nice. Did you get to try, it. try any breweries while you were up there? Went to Wicked Weed um, and we went to I guess you guys have had it. New World Brewing. New World Brewing? New World. Yeah. It's this they, one, right? Yeah. yeah. They are um, a one and a half barrel set up down in the basement of one of the buildings. Sounds here, terrible. It's great. <laughs> You guys want to try? I guess you've had it, but for the sake of the podcast, drink up. When I made it, I bought a couple um, pie pumpkins and roasted them with some brown sugar. Oh, I and saw that on I did, Instagram. Uh, part of it in the mash, and I did part of it in the boil. This one's fine. Oh, no. Dead air. What else is in the beer? So, <laughs> Love and happiness. Spices? Spices. Did you already say that? It's lightly spiced. Um, that was one thing I was worried about. I read a lot of people overspice the beer. Eat. So it's pretty light on the spices. Vanilla? What did you put in it? Or is it a proprietary blend? Proprietary blend from McCormick's. <laughs> <laughs> like pumpkin pie spice? Or? Yep. 
Ginger, vanilla, any of that other stuff? Just mm -mm. pumpkin pie spice. Mm, it smells good. Mm -hmm. That's nice. It's very, very, it's kind of, a lot of times they hit, hit you over the head. Pumpkin beers hit you over the head with the, with the, with the spices. That's we did pumpkin beers like way more subtle than two that. months yeah. ago. Yeah, because they come out in Behind August. Behind the now. times, guys. They, they come out in August now. You should have released this in July. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the ABV on this? Right around 5%. Okay. Um, I wanted to go with something that people can enjoy. That was like a my family, session pumpkin. they don't drink beer. So I wanted something that they would enjoy. What are they from Mars? Probably. <laughs> well, you, know, so say, you mean craft beer? Craft beer. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Fun. So they're from Georgia. <laughs> Pennsylvania. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, Big Yingling crowd, I bet. Yeah, well, Molson. 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 <laughs> Are they from Pennsylvania, Canada? <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> just, just south of here. Um, I want to say that this beer squashed their expectations. <laughs> it, sh it sure did. <laughs> We're so lame. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I was gonna make a nice. gourd pun, but I I'm gonna. Spare I was about to say off. you're sitting around someone who appreciates a finely executed pun. Yeah, awesome. Of. Well, there are a million uh, pumpkin beers with pun names. Cigar yeah. City, Good Gourd, like we were talking about. One of my favorites though is Ard Wolf's is Irma Gourd. Irma Gourd. Irma Gourd. <laughs> they had that on tap, I think, too. I didn't. I already had it, so I didn't try. It. Uh, so, we've had a lot of weird Irma Gourd. We had Irma Gourd. With Cacao nibs, you know, we had a bunch of those. Yeah, yeah. funny name. We've had rum barrel aged yeah. Irma Gourd. Yeah, I could definitely. This is a very sessionable pumpkin, which is they usually don't go together. So that's that's impressive. What I try to do in, in with Jacob you know, with the beer is we want to introduce people that may not, they may be on the fence, like with our yeah. IPA and stuff that's really bitter. Um, that usually turns people off. Yeah, that don't normally drink craft beer. But this isn't we, super sweet though. Mm -mm. So we try to. You know, have a fine line between appeasing both sides of the crowd. I'm thinking again about your um, brewery location in the community and stuff. Are you guys thinking about doing the uh, tours and that kind of good stuff? Oh yeah, we're we're looking at downtown Thomasville. Um, we, you know, because the tours are such a higher margin side of the business and the distributing. You know, me being a pessimist, you know, what I'm looking at, I don't expect them to be a big portion of the of the revenue, but um, yeah, we want, we want to do tours because, you know, ultimately our desire for this, as far as how it relates to Thomas film, this is something we, we, you know, we try to nail home every time we, we are in public or talking about it, which is we want to be part of that community. Yeah. We love Thomas film. We love that community. You know, I'm, I'm from care. I've grown up around it all my life. My wife is from Thomas Um, and, and what they here from mm -hmm. a different country. Yeah. yeah. Stop <laughs> it, Danny. <laughs> You know what? You is that 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 place. We loves, are the South Georgia podcast. You need to know how to pronounce that city. Well, the funny story about that is is, uh, is uh, we're, we're Southwest Georgia. So at the time, um, you know, Kara loves them some George W. Bush, right? And uh, and uh, I would have never guessed. Yeah, yeah, and no. boiled peanuts. But. Um, our science club or something at one point had went down there uh, or received something from the president or they went to visit him or something. He pronounced it Cairo on accident and you would have thought there was going to be a mutiny. To be um, fair, he can't spell potatoes or any other <laughs> stuff either. So, No, that's, 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 that's senior. That's uh, Dan Quayle. What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's senior's okay. vice president. I don't know politics yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> My point, my point being, we get that a lot. What do we keep you around for? You don't got the president's right. You don't got the city names right. It took me like four years to which, say Hira. George Bush, what are you talking about? Uh, w. Uh, GW, right? That's the one that Senior, misspelled Seniors vice president, Dan Quayle, misspelled potatoes. Or he told what? a kid that it's spelled with... Oh, is that who that yes. was? Yeah. Whatever. So, presidential podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you always late, like make pol politic jokes and stuff. Like I that. have not made any yeah, political last, jokes well, no, today. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Chris did last month, and it went right over my head. I don't remember what yeah, you were I talking about. Did that about me? Um, it made me think of another question, though, and before I interrupted. Well, oh, so, like, more about Thomas. One, one of the questions on our thing that, that sounds sort of offensive, we don't mean it that way, is uh, why Thomas we asked them the same thing last month. Why, why Valdosta? Why Thomas? Because it is quite possibly the best town in America. Yeah. Oh. Wearing what? a Thomasville shirt under there. 
I'm not. I, hey, I'm not. I love no, we don't Thomas Hill. Oh, we got, my gosh. We got a phone booth. We can go to that. <laughs> Have you guys been to the Lampham Patterson house? I think you should meet that with me. It's, we, been, we it's, it's been a long time. I'm sure. Been, it, we, um, we went there. We used to go there, and it was it's just such a great. Thomas Hill is just such an interesting place. There's all sorts of. I mean, it's just not. It's just kind of an elegant place, especially for South Georgia. The downtown's beautiful. We're going to talk about well, it's a good segue into the other stuff, but like. It's just a kind of a strange place, but strange in a great way. It makes you feel like you're out on the town. Like, you know, I'm originally from South Florida, Fort Myers, so moving there, it's been awesome. Yeah. Um, the only traffic jam that I run into is when the train cuts off downtown. Yeah. Um, so I was going to say, Thomasville. To keep elaborating. Why Thomasville? What else besides it's awesome? What makes it awesome? Why do you guys want to open in Thomasville? Well, there is that unique um, <clears throat> history and character to it that, for us, I, I don't think you can really find anywhere else. Mm -hmm. e e and not even just including, you know, reducing it to the region. I'm not sure you're going to find anywhere else, you know, in Georgia or, or mm -hmm. in the country. It's it's very unique. It's got it's got that old. I don't. It's. It's character is so it's hard. Small to town describe. USA. Yeah. If I had to describe small town USA, I would describe Tom. It is, but it's like. But it's, I don't know, it, 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 I, I'm with you. I don't know why to explain, explain why it's so great, but it is a fantastic place. Um, it's got a pull to it. It does. It does. And it's... Put it this way. I moved there in 2013. Uh, since then, my mom and stepdad have moved there, and now my dad and my stepmom have moved there. Very good. So my whole family's relocated to Thomasville. But also, it's, as far as, you know, outside of the culture and that kind of good stuff, you know, it's a very supportive community. They supporting local businesses is a big deal there. The downtown, it's they've done such a fantastic job with building up that downtown, uh, that downtown area, and uh, so the the local community around it, as far as being supportive of local businesses, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to they're, they're going to put those local businesses first. We were, you know, just for a couple of guys, um, for a couple of guys just trying to start a little business, we were. We were absolutely blown away um, by the turnout that we that we saw at the Tad Takeover. I mean, in that little bar in Liam's. In 20 gallons of beer in four hours. Keep rubbing it in how we weren't able to go. <laughs> well, well, because. <laughs> how it, many gallons of beer? We went through four or five gallon kegs. Wow. We had, we. We had been in before with four hours of Yeah, we. Um, that is fantastic community support. We sold seventy four souvenir glasses of products. Are you guys fairly nice. enmeshed in the Thomasville beer community? Because I know that it's a great beer club there. I know we they hopefully they're listening. Yeah, we need to get them get them on board. I'll post. Well, we do we do attend a beer club. Um, I had to unfortunately miss last month, um, but we, we do attend as often as we can. Um, we love we love the folks there. We you know my wife and I especially have made some really great friends mm -hmm. um, going through or meeting the beer club. I would say. You know, outside of just starting the business, you know, that's probably one of the best decisions we've made in, in, in trying to grow it to date. And it's, and it's not even a business decision. It doesn't even... Both times we've had events, they were all there. Yeah. So let's go ahead and roll into talking a little bit about Thomasville because Danny and I and our wives um, went on a trip, I think it was a Saturday morning a couple weeks ago. It's like we lunchtime. had a time. Yeah. Had a fantastic time. And um, the first place we went for brunch was Liam's by the way go to our Facebook page Ants Broom and uh, check out the pictures because they're awesome oh they're great um, I, I can honestly say I was blown away by Liam's from a beer perspective the food is great no I, I mean the food is fantastic more than great yeah yeah but the the beer they had um, they I think we had a Stillwater Cellar Door I had a weird heavy seas and terrapin collaboration rye wit beer there was Omnipolo mm. Aurora. Oh, that's what I had. Which that was so good. Speaking of not being on topic, when I first saw Omnipolo, I mean, I think they're from Sweden. I was thinking it was like Omnipollo. <laughs> so it's like so it's like some sort of like um, you know, chicken. chicken that goes through space and time and brews this fantastic beer. I was very disappointed. <laughs> I mean, not Omnipolo. The beer, the beer, the beer was, was awesome. Fantastic. Too, right? Yeah, but I mean, space chicken beer. Space. That, I mean, what would you want? Speaking of, uh, I just poured you guys a sample of New Glare Scream Double IPA. Thanks, thanks, Danny's mom. Um, thanks, Danny's mom. Thanks, mom. 
Danny's mom comes for a tube of ween and passes out candy, and my daughter just is in love with your mom. She just thinks she's the sweetest lady. <laughs> Not because of the candy, but she actually sat next to her. For t- okay, totally off topic. But um, <laughs> they're like, we're just like Liam's- randomly bringing up tube of ween, and these guys are like, what are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Liam's, um, is it Rhonda? Rhonda, Rhonda. Rhonda. She is, I mean, she knows her beer. She was very accommodating. Um, she came and talked to us, showed us the, the, the bar area, which they also have the best tap handles I've ever seen because they're like Marie Sendex where the wild things are. Mm-hmm. And they're like spot. I mean, they look like they're popping out of the book. But the beer, it was such a perfectly curated beer selection. I was, it is a beer destination. And whether they sponsored us or not, I would say like, if you are a South Georgia beer lover or North Florida, you need to go to Liam's for the food and the beer. Because there's, we, I mean, Danny and I, we try a lot of beer, and I think there was probably seven or eight beers we hadn't even had there, which is unusual for when we go to a place, especially in about 20, 20 taps, maybe 18 taps. So It's kind of like uh, what, what we always say about Craft on Draft. It's, uh, it's obvious that Liam's is uh, making an effort to make relationships and get good beers as opposed to just like, man, we'll just order whatever craft beer. Like they know what they're doing or she knows what she's doing. It's beer you're not going to find and probably never find again. I mean, it was, you know, one-offs, weird stuff. Um, it is great, great, great and beer. food was awesome. Yeah. What and did you have? You had something. I had like a, some sort of sandwich that had an egg and cheese sauce on it. Croquet. Yeah. yeah. It was so good. I had a. Croquet my bottom. I had a salmon BLT. Smoked salmon. A, smoked salmon so on a brooche. And my wife had a sous vide. Hanger steak. She did. It was amazing. Yeah. You guys feeling hungry yet? <laughs> so, well, you guys can go to Liam's whenever. They're like, we, we go to these places all the time. Actually, I had Pop Tarts for breakfast. So. <laughs> uh, what, what flavor? <laughs> Don't say fruit. Don't say fruit. <laughs> um, so, what? Liam's. Don't say fruit. You were getting on to him about having fruit yeah. Pop Tart. Oh, he said Popeyes. That's not didn't you say Popeyes? No, I said strawberry. He was. No, didn't Coming you say back I to the segment? For breakfast? Breakfast? No, I said pop tarts for breakfast. Oh, so. God. he was—he was, really, was, really he was trying to circle. bring it full circle, and now we got to talk about Popeyes chicken. <laughs> I thought he said I had Popeyes for breakfast. I think you need to get them to sponsor. Gosh, well. I'm just gonna Popeyes quit. would be good, like wouldn't it? Some biscuits. biscuits. <laughs> Popeyes buttery biscuits. <laughs> delicious. Man, chicken biscuit. We don't want a corporate beer. sponsor. <laughs> no, our Liam's sponsors are Liam's Sweetgrass Five Points and Popeyes. One of these things is not like the other. There's Omni Pollo. What goes well with biscuit. Omni Pollo beer? Chicken biscuits <laughs> from space. Oh, anything else about Liam's? It was fantastic. It was awesome. Go there. Um, oh, oh uh, no. Wait. Did she say they have an event? Oh, I didn't know they had a bar either. Is that relatively new ish? Yeah. And they have a cheese shop. They have all sorts of good cheese, uh, hand selected. Um, Rhonda's cheese plates. Yeah. It says on the menu. Yeah. If um, you come to Beer Club, they pass around cheese plates. Oh, I'm, we need to go to beer clubs. Yes, time. Beer first, club. Tuesday, first, first Tuesday. Tuesday of every month. In fact, I talked to Ron about maybe sometime recording, doing our podcast there, oh, and yeah. interviewing because I think she'd be. We may fantastic. actually do a podcast from Liam's at some point. Yep. Um, I'm sick. And after Liam's, we went. We walked by two places that were not really open, but we kind of went in, or we saw their menu, or we went well, and checked out. Bacchus was open. Bacchus was open. Um, Bacchus seemed to be a really cool place. They they had about. Oh, 18 taps, but half of them were rotating Georgia beers. Good, ro- I mean, good, solid, great craft beer, all from Georgia. And then the lady who was working, who was a, kind of a business on the business side, she said they try to rotate only Georgia craft beers, which is cool. Yeah. But they also seem to have lots of wine and sushi. And- it wasn't like the, the craft beer destination that like Liam's is, but they had a good selection. It seemed like a cool place. Fun yeah. place to hang and out. And she said they're like building a amphitheater or yes. something like right behind yes. it, which is lucky them, right? Yes. So that'll be a, well, a cool place to hang. They do. Um, <clears throat> see, with Bacchus, I tend to associate that with um, Tom's Store Nightlife a little more. That's usually where, you know, when we go out at night, my wife and I will go, we'll go to Bacchus because they'll, Cause I have some friends that play in bands and they'll mm-hmm. play at Bacchus and stuff, so that's in my brain how I associate it. Uh, but I've heard I've heard the lunch is fantastic as well. Um, oh yeah, we didn't get to try any food. We were yeah. stuffed from. Um, plus, we knew Sweetgrass was coming up, so we were yeah. trying to save. They they <laughs> room. Um, yeah, but they totally um, they totally had a pretty pretty well, solid cool selection. That, like, and 
that's what I love about in our Valdosta episode, our first episode, we talked about what like what you're talking about is there's a place here called Ashley Street Station, which people don't think of as a beer destination, and it's not like Liam's, and it's not like Craft on Draft, but you go there to see the live music, you go there for the nightlife, you go to a bar, you want to have fun, but incidentally, they have a lot of good craft beer, and so it's like for me, you know, well I'm actually like wine quite a bit too, but. And, you know, it's like you or your wife or your friends want to go to some bar or want to go hang out or be social. And then you get the bonus of like, hey, craft beer. By the way, when you guys do open up and start distributing, make sure you get some of Valdosta. Oh, yeah. That's um, it's one of the it's one of the markets we want to be in. I mean, we're looking at the whole southwest region of Georgia yeah. as, you know, a, a, a market. Um, and, and, and I think, you know, with with Georgia Beer Company and even if. I think the whole Southwest region can itself support, you know, three or four brewers. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, easily. So I think they, they even mentioned that they'd be down for collaborating. Yeah. Um, and, and so yeah, we uh, we're, we're looking, we're we're definitely just looking at the the region as a whole, not necessarily. We're we're going to be based in Thomasville, we're going to be part of the Thomasville community, do the tours, do all that kind of good stuff, but also you know, I got I, we got to make money. Yeah. And so girl got to eat. Yeah. I mean, I think there's there's plenty of room. To, it's not like there's a, a saturation of... <laughs> that took a little bit of processing. It came through. I'm filtering it out. It's not like there's a saturation of South Georgia breweries. So, mm-mm. come on. Possibly, possibly next month or the month after, we'll have uh, the guys that are opening the brewery in Albany, Georgia. Yeah, we're going to try to... And we're working on uh, getting the guys, or, or guys and gals, guys generically, uh, from the buzzery as well. You guys been to the buzzery? Uh, the, the one in Boston. Boston. Yes. yes. It was mean. We're going, we want to do the January Mead Spectacular. Mead Spectacular. <laughs> Mead Spectacular. Anyway, <laughs> we also walked up to Chop House. We didn't get to eat. The, we, they were they closed. had the beer menu. The, the food looked delicious. The food, food is awesome. Yes. Um, the beer awesome. seems, they had a couple of scofflaws, several Georgia. You guys are actually, uh, uh, whoever was talking to us on Instagram, Chop House was one of the places you mentioned. Kind of surprised me. And then I looked at their uh, menu online, and then I looked at the menu on their uh, the door. Uh, whoever curates the bottles, craft beer bottle selection there clearly knows know what, what they're, they're doing, doing or, or a good sales rep is helping them out. Because I was actually kind of surprised. Like, in many ways, they're, though, though they don't have draft beer. No, they craft do. Beer? They do? Mm-hmm. It just what, maybe wasn't on the menu, or I don't remember. Yeah, but uh, I think they, they had a few. It had to have been because they had long stuff. Yeah, but they yeah. had some bottles too. I think so. It what, was what either way. It was good. Yeah, like, it was good stuff. I, the selection was uh, though, and not not meaning anything bad about them. I was actually kind of surprised because I thought the beer selection at Chop House was better than Bacchus. It was weirder. It was more. Yeah, yeah. It was like Prairie and Scofflaw and yeah. like you know cool random stuff. I think we love Scofflaw. Bacchus. Mm-hmm. Bacchus was probably a little bit more accessible type stuff, like nightlife beer. You know, you want to yeah. go out and you want to get uh, uh, sweet water or something yeah, like it's that. It's a different atmosphere. Yeah, um, yeah. But Matt, the owner of Chop House, has been very supportive as well. Nice. Um, so we're looking to do something with him in the future. That works, you know. I want to uh, go get a steak there sometime. Yeah, get I want to dry age ribeye. The what? Dry age ribeye. I want to get a steak and drink some Big Oak Brewing beers. That's a good plan. You guys can do that by next week, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> No, we, uh, we have a place in town called Austin's. Have you guys been to Austin's? Is that out by the interstate? Yeah, it's not, not as fancy of a steak place, but it's like a, a, a steakhouse. And they're like the only place in town that has Omaha Brewing Company beers on tap. Mm. Uh, I guess it's like their cousin or something. Yeah. The craft on draft gets them too. Oh, we love going to Omaha. Yeah. yeah but, um, Jacob they got some good too. With the general. <laughs> <laughs> they were, they were wow. Robert. Is it Robert E. Lee? Yes. What? <laughs> what does Siri have to say about that? Uh, it was a no, they were here recently. Uh, not not here, Craft but they were at Craft on Draft, yeah. And they were doing. He seemed uh, like a good guy. Berliner Vice, yeah. like him syrup. syrup. Um, I was up there with my wife and my best friend uh, about a month ago. Took him up there because um, he's in the army, so he was over here and took him up there to try some craft beer. Right. Absolutely, nice. always a fun Probably time. Probably not not too far away from you guys. Quite the drive. No, it's about two hours. Oh well, never mind. It's al- almost all the way to Columbus. Yeah. All right, moving right along. Another, N- another sick stop. Oh, my gosh. It was so good. Um, we stopped at the Sweetgrass Cheese Shop. Cheese Shop. Sweetgrass Dairy Cheese Grass Dairy Chee Shop. And, and like Facebook says. Ian, he was the one of the managers there, something like that. General he, manager. He, he uh, another clear craft beer nerd just by talking to him. But they um, <clears throat> had, 
again, just a perfectly curated beer selection. I think I had Blackberry Farms Winter Saison, which was this great dark we saison. We had lots of crazy stuff. I had like a Georgia IPA. My wife had a Nitro Founders Rubeus, which she was just, mm-hmm. she had a couple of them there. Um, <laughs> but she, she loved them. It's a little and, But then they brought out a cheese plate. And oh, it had, so good. Oh, it was unbelievable. Had It was like full charcuterie almost. Yeah. We had crackers. We had cheese. Nuts, I don't know what that word honey. means, but yeah. Charcuterie? Like meat and cheese plate. It was a big meat and cheese plate. Because they, 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 <laughs> they, they went a step beyond because they gave us one of their cheese plates, but then they added the meat. Okay. Yeah. As, as like an extra bonus. And it was like. It was so good. Whatever it was. Next time you go there, get their uh, burger with the bourbon bacon jam and pimento oh. cheese. I haven't had it with the pimento cheese on it yet. It was- we had the, the pimento cheese was on the cheese plate. It was great. But they. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, you know, Ian, we talked to Ian. He was, he was super busy, so he didn't have a lot of time to chat, but seemed like a real nice guy. Certainly knew but his beer. But he still beer. did, which is yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, everybody seemed, you know, it's just it's just, just another craft beer destination in Thomasville that wherever you live would be worth the drive to go, um, particularly to is- Sweetgrass or Liam's. But, but, but Thomasville in general seems to have a really good beer culture. When you guys get going, it's going to take it to another level. And you will it's have kind of the, the whole point of this podcast is to continue to enlighten people about craft beer culture in South Georgia. And, you know, we've covered Valdosta, what, a couple times now. Now we begin our branching out to Thomasville and Albany. It's like people need to know, you know, if you live in Valdosta or wherever, go to Thomasville because not only is, I mean, this stuff is amazing. Yeah. I mean, Liam's and, and Sweetgrass were awesome. They were just both Utterly fantastic. We moving around. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, and they're they're just genuinely good people. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, just they're, they're they're good people. You don't mind going and, and spending your money and, and supporting. Um, Small business Saturday, y'all. Yep. Yep. You should plus. Be I mean, and, and it's a little off topic, I guess, for our podcast, but there's so much cool stuff to do there. Yeah, they have. My wife loves all the antique yeah, shops, bookstores, antiques. Stores. I think they have a record shop. I, 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 yes, I do records, so they have a record shop there. They have a cool like tobacco shop and taxidermy. Is that still around? Yes, <laughs> tobacco yes. and taxidermy. <laughs> Which I'm not really into either, but hey, it's a cool place to walk through. I think I'm gonna do uh, one of my rare once or twice a year cigars tonight. Actually, I'm gonna go to Stogies for Small Business Saturday. There you go. Cigar have at bar. It. Cigar bar. We also it's stopped at a couple. Back through cigar bar. <laughs> <laughs> if it was, they'd know Ryan. <laughs> well, I, I drive to one place. The other side of the liquor store. It's so not like I'm sitting at. I hit Taco Bell every day. I drive through one place. Me, <laughs> me. No, I get it. You have kids and they're in car seats and blah blah blah. That just made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna move right along from that. <laughs> okay, so we also stopped at a couple. Those, those were our favorites, like bar. You, bar you guys went in Thomasville. Any other uh, like bars or restaurants you feel we should mention? People would go uh, to for craft beer. Well, another one that a lot of people go to, but I'm not too familiar. I don't think it has too much of a craft beer selection. But that's honestly because I don't. Uh, the Plaza is one that a lot of people go to for the nightlife as well. Um, but I'm not too familiar as much with their with their craft selection. Um, but that, but that's another one, uh, and then Three Oaks and what's? Oh, we'll Robert? get to yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna talk about yeah, we'll the get to We went to we both went to Bird Dog and Three Oaks. Yeah, very both were very nice, very clean. Bird Dog we've been to a few times actually, in the past. Some cool stuff. I saw like a love child on the on the shelf. Yeah, um, Bird Dog seemed to have the uh, like better selection. But not as good as I remember them having in the past. So maybe they, uh, the, the craft yeah, beer. It was fine. It off. was, yeah, it was, it was, they, they both had good, I mean, you would not go wrong going to either place. I think um, Three Oaks sold single bottles, which is kind of cool. So if you just want to check one out, both had mix six things, which are great for craft beer drinkers if you want to try, you know, six different beers. Um, both very, you know, Friendly to us when we went there, and, yep. and uh, I think I found uh, like a Sweetwater uh, squeeze box, a grapefruit. Oh, six we got pack. a new. Then I had both rate, uh, try to rate as many Georgia beers as possible, yeah. so we found a new Georgia beer while we were there. So, um, either place can't go wrong. Good, good, good bottle shops, good liquor stores. You know, they're not. Um, I like specific that. craft beer type places, but the, in in general, they. Um, I like that. One thing that. 
maybe we take for granted that I liked was that they were both just well lit, bright, clean scores, like five points. You know, just a pleasant place to go to. That's underrated, I think. It's not very shady. I like my experience to be nice. There's some, at least one liquor store I go to with relative frequency in town where there's often police in the parking lot and lots of other <laughs> issues and it's dirty. Well, and... unfortunately, we don't have one that has a But hey, the liquor is cheap. <laughs> so, you're missing out, man. <laughs> if you're in Thomasville, definitely check out um, all those places we mentioned, the bottle shop. Just go to Thomasville. It's a great place. To it's a great out. place. We, we went to the Big Oak. We took our picture with the Big Oak. There's a picture of us doing like this weird karate pose. Like, <laughs> I think it's our profile picture on Anta Broom yeah, right now. Let's hope not. We got. We're um, running out of time. We got to dive forward. Dive forward. All right. What's the, our next segment? They're hard. Is it Cask be another? Oh, we, I got oh. a special segment. I want to talk about my growler. We can. Uh, Let me, before, while hold, on, hold on. Hold on. We got this new glare smoke on the porter. You guys try. Oh, you still got some IPA. Come on, man. Let me talk about this growler because this growler might have saved lives today. This is a true story. We were driving down to the podcast. It was empty. Um, And (laughs) the park where I live was on fire. Apparently somebody had smoked a cigarette or a stogie. Hopefully not Danny. And they left it on the playground. I wasn't in Ray City today. Well, you never know. Somebody smoked smoked a cigarette and just flicked it on the ground. And there was a smoldering fire in the like kind of wood processed, you know, compressed wood chips that are on the bottom of the playground. It's been so dry. And so my wife and I pull over real quick and we go check it out because we do those sorts of things. And we're like, oh my gosh, it's a fire. And this other couple stuff, oh my gosh, it's a fire. And so somebody's like, well, do you have something to put it out? Do you have a cup or anything? And I just cleaned out the car so I didn't have any like, you know, McDonald's Happy Meal cups or whatever I usually have on the bottom of my floorboards Speaking but i was like i got this empty bowl. growler <laughs> so i start filling up the growler running over pour the what? growler full of water that's so this, awesome this growler saved the playground today thank you for your service yep did anybody call now the it's police? holding a delicious beer <laughs> did anybody call the police we or the did. fire department yes we did oh yeah <laughs> first instinct get the growler awesome <laughs> i like i'm a hands-on type of guy we did call the ray city volunteer fire department they came out with their big hose Put out the fire that I'd already put out with this growler, but you know, just to make sure, let the professionals volunteer. Professionals what if it had had it. beer? I mean, they don't really need swings. Stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> <laughs> you can always buy another. Smother shirt. it out with your I th- beer. I think I would have drank the thirty-two ounces real quick oh, and then gosh. saved the fire, but I probably would have missed where I needed to pour it off. <laughs> that would have been an interesting <laughs> podcast. So, thank you for your service, growler. Now you hold delicious Georgia beer. Okay, that segment wasn't planned, but I felt like I needed to tell that story. I, I was going to say, today. you told me you had a story. That's pretty epic. It was an epic story. It's All time right. for Cast Me Another. All right, I'm going to start doing Cast Me Another. One of our new favorite segments where we ask stupid beer questions to smart <clears throat> beer people. You like punt. Cast Me Another. There we go. All right. So, how do you guys want to do it? Do you both want to answer or want to throw a jump in? You don't have any buzzers? No buzzers. Dang it. We can... Both ask you, and we can rate which one's better if you are. Are you guys on a time limit, by the way? Or are you good if this goes yeah. more than an hour? Okay. okay. No, sixty minutes exactly. It's all you get. We're paying <laughs> to the recorder. Sixty <laughs> minutes, and we're done. <laughs> As we get more, than the, the, depends. The, Is there the gonna beat? be Popeyes, pop tarts, <laughs> pop tarts or Popeyes? <laughs> Either one. What if we fried chicken? What if we? What, what if we breaded it with crushed up pop tarts? Mm. Okay. Time for, for cast me another. Not strawberry though. <laughs> We're Fun back. Cherry. We can We're back. We are back to where we started. We need to dive forward, as you just said. All right. I'm, just some Popeyes. I'm saying chime in. Go ahead, chime in. Either of you, one of you, however you want to do. All right, cast me another. Here we go. First question. Thanksgiving food that should definitely be made into a beer. Cranberry sauce. That's good. good answer. Thanksgiving food that should definitely not be made into a beer. Dressing. Grandma's dressing. A stuff it. You mean like stuff it? My grandma's dressing the greatest beer. I don't know about your grandma's dressing. No, you know, they much. make the, the Jones Soda Thanksgiving oh gosh, dinner. Stop it, They're stop so it. gross. <laughs> I had it. The Brussels sprouts one, I about threw up. Yeah. Ooh, so speaking gross. of Brussels sprouts, or the greens. Greens. we go to Wicked Weed uh-huh. in Nashville. They have like the best Brussels sprouts they braise and uh, maple syrup and fatback. Nice. I've been there a couple they, times. Did they brew with that? Or? 
Hmm? They brew with that? No, they eat. No, Russell. I know. <laughs> okay. Oh, I fell right into that yeah, one. Yeah, you sure did. All right. That's you don't Famous know. beer icon that should be made into a Macy's Day Parade balloon. Oh, the girl on the Nimbus brewing bottle for uh, their blonde ale. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Polly's girl, but... It, Oh, Polly's at least good. your at least your minds were both. I was thinking the the, the Miller High Life girl would be good, or the Ham's Bear. Uh, at least or like, like, at least none of our wives are sitting right, ten feet away from us right now as we talk about this. Oh. That's true. All right. <laughs> For, uh, <laughs> you, you got one. It would be a good balloon. Uh, I don't know. Ardwolf. Ardwolf be good. The, the Ardwolf. Okay. I can't think of his name. He has a name. So. For those of you listening at home, an ent is a giant, sentient tree from the the Lord of the Rings, from the Lord of the Rings series. In, so in this English, next question, that means, that in English, that means they're like alive, a live like a, tree, like a big oak, a live tree. Exactly. There's my next question. The famous Thomasville Big Oak is a live tree. What beer is it drinking? Or amber ale, or brown ale. I mean, it's kind of the namesake. I would hope it is drinking some sort of big oak. Okay, good answer. We, we good. tried to trick uh, Georgia Beer Company too, and they they, uh, they also caught the curve ball. All right, this is beer associations. You, I'm going to say a name of a famous person. You have to tell me the type of beer or a specific type, specific a brand, style of beer style. brand that you think fits this personality. All right, first personality. Here we go. Singing and sideburn icon Elvis Presley. Ooh, he's got to be a pilsner, right? Pilsner. Yeah, pilsner. St. Pauli's girl. Always girl comes up again. All right, here we go. <laughs> Clownish fast food peddler Ronald McDonald. Oh God, mm. Schlitz. Ogles, <laughs> Ogles. Or do what would he? What would he be drinking if he was a scary clown? Which is all the Ogles. <laughs> Blood. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. All right. Gosh, I wasn't th- what I was thinking when I wrote this one. <laughs> World War One German ace and awesome oven baked pizza, the Red Baron, <laughs> von Richthofen. Amber, right? Amber, or red? Really, anything if you're eating Red Baron. How did you <laughs> think of this stuff? I don't know. I don't. You don't want to know. All right. Yeah, red IPA would be good for that one. I didn't think about it. that. Was, that was a that was a softball pitch. It depends a lot on the type of pizza. Oh. It depends if you had anything to drink before the pizza. I think if you're eating a Red Baron, it's guaranteed you had something to drink before. You ate, decided to eat that pizza. You know, some of us just make bad decisions without alcohol. Yeah. Have you considered that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll work on that. <laughs> All right. Media mogul and fabulous, fabulosa, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. What's a fabulosa? That, that's not even in my notes. Did you add that? I know. I You're took it out. You're making stuff up. No, I took it out. <laughs> Oprah, Win- Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey. Probably like a shandy. Ooh, oh, ooh, I can Shandy would be good for Oprah. Shark and alien... Enthusiast Steven Spielberg <laughs> in World War II. He's got to be drinking some kind of sour, right? He's about to be drinking something real strong, something imperial. Imperial sour. All right, that sounds pretty good. All right, floppy hat wearing weatherman Al Roker. Let's go, Nick Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he can take after his uh, <laughs> surgery. <laughs> good answer. It depends, though, depending on the type of surgery. He's watching his figure. You can't have carbonation. I learned that. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Oh, I can get the left hand milk stout with the yeah. micro. Good stuff. All right. We're done with beer associations. Last question. You each have to answer. What hop describes your personality? <clears throat> My first answer is Fuggles just in the way. <laughs> Magnum, because I'm large and in charge. There you go. Oh, first, we were talking Danny, about. Danny, what's your answer? We were talking about Ray City's big hose, now we're talking about Magnum. Um, whatever is bitter and sour. <laughs> you gotta give me the name of actual hop. Uh, uh, what's the bittering hop I always use? I'm blanking. Warrior. Warrior is gonna be mine. Darn it. I'll say. Uh, Sorry. You do smell like pee. Citra. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go Citra. All right. That was a fan- another fantastic segment of Cast Me Another. All right. Now we're on to our most famous segment in three episodes. This one is a... So we often do a seasonal six-pack in six minutes. 
Oh, I gotta get the timer up. Yeah, get the timer up. But Today, this this month brought to you by Five Points Fine Wine and Spirits. Five Points. We are doing the the four minute four bomber detonation review. Oh, you said it was gonna be super spectacular review or something. The like that. five point four bomber four minute spectacular super review <laughs> detonation. It's a working Mor- process. Moral yes. of the story: takes five points. Stuff's gonna blow up. Rewind to an hour and a half ago when I said, I'll make it up on the fly. I've got it. Don't worry about it. All right. So what's the first? Are we going to pour all of them? Or are we, we just going to pour, pour as we go? Here, you pour. I'll ask them some of the questions we skipped. Okay. Go. And we'll have to use the glasses they already have to, though. Okay. All right. So one of the questions from earlier that we ended up skipping in the order. timing. Is there any particular uh, beer or brewery that helped to get you guys into homebrew? Because you're the brewer more so. For me, it was when I went up to my family lives in Meadville, Pennsylvania, and I went to um, Voodoo Brewing, and they have a beer there called Voodoo Love Child. It's a Belgian style beer that's aged on um, some, I think it was cherries and raspberries. Mmm, that does sound good. So that's kind of what I've always wanted to have my own business, and I think that's what kind of pushed me towards that. What got you into craft beer, maybe? Um, actually, strangely enough, even though it's not really craft, uh, Newcastle. Yeah, well, but, everyone has yeah. a transition beer. Because, uh, you know, it was, you know, growing up in South Georgia, it's Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, uh, anything that has a light at the end of it. Natty Light? Yeah. Oh, I didn't ask my Natty Light question. What's the Natty Light question? Natty Light, Natty Heavy, or Natty Just Right? How about Natty No? <laughs> <laughs> That's not one of the options, but you know, whatever, it's your world. You use the natty to pour into the thing that chills the pitcher yeast. So why Newcastle? Um, I don't I don't know. It was just um it wasn't this pale yellow, sickly color. Um and so I was like, hey, that looks different, let me give that a shot. Well then they're in order. <clears throat> don't mess up my And order. then uh, from there for me it was a uh, fat tire that finished the transition. Oh, okay. Fat tire. Believe it or not, uh I used to work in the biz. I worked in a lot of liquor and beer stores, and uh, I got to go when uh, Fat Tire, when New Belgium was uh, finally going to be sold in Florida. I was a beer manager at a good store in Jacksonville, and so I got to go to this private release party for all the New Belgium beers, and we got free raffle tickets, and I won an actual uh, Fat Tire beer beach cruiser bicycle. Like the big, cool. thick right. beach bikes. I have it in my shed. I ride it to work sometimes. But it's like all branded as New Belgium Fat Ooh. Tire Beer. It's like red, orange and black and has the logos all over it. It's super cool. I feel like you should ride it in for the entrance of the podcast. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes. I feel like that's a great idea. And I'm not sure the missus would like that across the wooden floors. And you can put down towels. We can make it. Put down sand. Put With, down sand. What, what are the barriers to making this work? Oh, yeah. The tube we forgot it. to talk about yes. the tube inventory. This is something where you, I think our. Um, I didn't know we were going to talk about it. Well, we are now. We are now. Let's do the four minute four pack super detonation bomber extravaganza. All right. I'm not sure I remember what the beers are now that we put them up there. So this was right. the Terrapin. This was the Ballast. It goes in pipe. order. It's the third one. Oh, the Cloud. Okay. In the last right. Everybody can see them at home. Do you know what they are? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. All right. I'm a beer expert. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> As you know, this is the only podcast in South Georgia where we review four beers in four minutes. Sometimes S- six in six minutes. Sometimes six in six minutes. But today we're doing four in four minutes. The only South Georgia beer podcast where you get this sort of quality review where four right. men talk about four beers in four minutes. Side note, we're also the only South <laughs> Georgia craft beer <laughs> podcast. We, we might it. be the only South Georgia <laughs> podcast. You didn't know that. No, you're not wrong. <laughs> my, like my pest control guy, shout out to Baird's Pest Control. You like puns. This one's epic. Him and a guy who lives now in North Carolina, I think, have a pest control podcast I listen to called Arthro Podcast, which is the best name in the world. That is a good name. <laughs> Are we ready? That is a good name. We're going to start right. on the left, right? Well, tell us what oh. it is before you start the time. Uh, Terrapin. I said I knew them. All American Oat Pale Ale. Do we know anything about it? It's a pale ale. That's American. From Terrapin. Let's go. Here we go. All right. Cheers. Has started. Oh, we should cheers for real. Cheers. Cheers. Woo. I 
forgot to do a rap sheet. Oh, I just got these this morning, that's why. It looks like they used um, Bryce and Epiphany Craft Malts. It's for the night. election year, a farm collaboration with our beloved malt and hop suppliers. Nice. Good. Yeah, it's um, laid back. Very, very crisp. You can get some of the chewy oat. Reminds me of uh, Fruit Loops. Not super hoppy for pale ale. I like those new age hoppy ones, but it's not very hoppy at it's, all. It's, it's a nice change. It's smooth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost creamy for pale. Well, what makes it farm? Just because they uh, uh, collaborated with um, these malt makers. Never mind. Time's up. All right. What's the next beer? Next is Ballast Point Mocha Marlin. So this, a minute now. Start, oh, what, what happened? Start now. This is their uh, Marlin Porter with coffee, chocolate, and natural flavors. That's what it says. I like the mocha. I like the chocolate, but I don't like the fish. <laughs> yeah, they really should have skipped That's the, a Ballast Point they, joke. They should have skipped the salmon or the Marlin on this one. <laughs> Why did I say a random fish when Marlin is in the name? This is, this is nice, though. This is good. Although, it's better than the baseball team. We're doing a craft beer podcast, so we really shouldn't have Terrapin. This beer could point. fill a stadium. Ooh, that's cold. Ooh, that's... That, that's cold. Sell out. Dude. Sell out. Dude. Just kidding. That's we our hometown. You. We love you, Terrapin. Dallas Point, you're cool, too. Make good beers. It's chocolate, coffee. What's the Marlin base beer? Porter. Porter? Yeah. You guys should do a whole podcast on Porter versus Stout. Oh. Ah. Are those types of beers or something? Fish. <laughs> I'd say, do you catch those offshore? or? I got one more word to say about this. That's, I like this. It's pretty good. Um, that was a lot more than one word. Good. It's it's what was the word going to be? It's hyphenated. Um, Sycophantes. Yes. <laughs> Sycophantes. Popeyes. Popeyes. <laughs> All right, what's next? Oh, this is the Stone Heavy Seas Collaboration. Imperial Brown IPA brewed with blackstrap molasses. Sounds like a disaster what? waiting to happen. Sounds like a pirate. Minute, go. Go. Oh, that smells good. Mm. Ooh, it smells good. Wow, that is good. It's kind of resiny type hops. It's not as much molasses as I might think. It's not a super sweet type beer. No, but probably depending on when they add it in the process. Although that could, that, that, that could be uh, some of the other beer mixing with it right now. Yeah. That's a good brown IPA try. though. It's got a good balance between the the malt and the if I make, almost piney. If yeah. I may quote the, the, uh, the, the pine resin. Yeah, yeah. If I may quote the um, Samuel L. Jackson Chappelle show skit. Please don't. It'll get you drunk. Please don't. Oh, <laughs> he did it. Sorry, folks. Yeah. Hey, Chappelle's coming back. He sure is. Where was he? Yeah. SNL. He was gone for a long time. He didn't do anything. He hosted SNL, and now they're going to release a bunch of Netflix specials. And Speaking of sellouts, really? they didn't, didn't get any Bourbon County Stout in town. Jeez. BS. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the – wasn't that? Maybe not Netflix, but yeah, they announced that somebody is going to be Netflix. releasing three Chappelle. Wow. Twenty million, twenty million apiece. That's how like much that he job. gets paid to do one. I'd probably do three too. <laughs> Nobody's going to pay me twenty million. My life to though see is like I don't, I, I don't know that I know the I difference think that between. Pick up the podcast. Yeah, so maybe we can get Dave Chappelle as a sponsor. We, think can, like we can play the drums in the background. We can do like Quest Love. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll We're ride down. Around on like We're cycles down. and stuff in the background. Or the, or the fat tire bicycle. <laughs> yeah. well, in my cool. life, I don't think I'd be able to tell the difference between 20 million and 60 million. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. That's a lot of millions. I think I could tell the difference. <laughs> Two Ferraris instead of one. I would. <laughs> I, first of all, Ferrari powered by you beer. all would be financed. So would Georgia Beer Company. <laughs> and second of all, all I would do is be hanging out at the breweries that I partially own. Beer owned. pipeline between Tomazol and Valdosta. Oh, man. It's like the middleman. Last but not least, we got a big boy here. This is a, a red wine barrel aged barley wine yeah. by Heavy Seas, 12.2% below decks. They release different ones of these <laughs> every every month, every year. That sniff got me. This is the 2016. <laughs> Minute, go. All right. <laughs> it's probably one. 
Ooh, oh, yeah. Jesus. Get some of that red wine in there, too. What are your guys' favorite styles of beer to drink? I started out with IPAs, and now I've kind of gravitated towards the darker beers. Mm-hmm. I've always been a brown guy. Um, it doesn't look very brown. It was... <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to time. say something. You know, I find that Twinter. offensive. It's winter time. <laughs> I, I don't have my summer tan anymore. It's brown in other places. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the best minute ever. <laughs> Worst work. <laughs> oh, awful. Oh, man. Awful. I think we got a new host. Sorry, Danny. <laughs> I just randomly disappear all the time to go grab beers anyway. So. Now, in fairness, your wife did say that by the end of the podcast that you you know we'd be getting more of these one-liner puns. So. Wasn't wrong. Yep. No, but that's the that's the funny story about my my growth in like drinking craft beers. I was so excited, like I said, I started out in Newcastle, moved on a fat tire, and then uh, was Southern Magnolia, their, their pecan beer, and then I did something else, and they're. Basically, I tried all these different types of beers, and I was like, "Yes, I'm expanding my palate." And then when I then when I went on and started actually researching them and learning more, I was like, "Brown ale, brown ale, brown ale, amber, brown ale." Brown. I was like, "Son of a." Oh, well, there's, there's a lot. Brown. There's a lot of diversity within styles now, which is good. I mean, just look what we got here. We had what brown IPA, a barley wine, red wine. What else do we have? I mean, we all things the, considered, we had a pale ale, the pale ale, a mocha porter, smoked porter, double IPA, sour. Uh, Wait, is the pumpkin. smoked porter the one he put out the fire with? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was the what was the sycophantus. I didn't put it out with that though. That would have been I mean, an expensive I you stopped fire. Roll. That could be a. Favorite. I didn't. I never stopped drop or roll. Um, so favorites from the four? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What you got? All of them. You like them all? Yeah. They're all pretty good. I like beer. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> five points has all these beers available. You really can't go wrong. Um, in particular, I think I like that um, brown IPA with the molasses was real interesting. But the like barley the wine, if you want, if you want to, you want to go for a bang for your buck type beer, that barley wine with the red wine, good taste. The Gets three, going. everything except the ballast point is on the shelf. The warm shelf across from the cooler. The ballast point is on the uh, wooden circular rack. Mm -hmm. Or just ask. And uh, that's another thing we ask of you listeners that we haven't asked in the past. Oh, yes, please. If you go into Five Points or Liam's or or Sweetgrass, uh, mention that you heard about them from us. Uh, We want them to know that, uh, you know, their sponsorship is making a difference. Yeah, and we know you guys go, but hey, say something. Say something about the podcast. And we and we do, you know, appreciate uh, you guys going to our sponsors. They really, you know, put themselves out. We've, you know, we're just starting out. That we did have three hundred views on our YouTube last last month, and just hopefully we'll shocking. get another three hundred. I feel well, like people want to know what's going on out there. I think there's is not that big of a number, but I feel like when you consider that most people listen on iTunes and Stitcher and stuff like that. But and 300 people watch on YouTube. That's crazy. But definitely, when you go to Five Points, Liam, Sweetgrass, tell them that you, you know you heard about it on the podcast. If you pick up one of these beers, one sounded super interesting on the podcast. Um, once you start going to Big Oak Brewery um, every day, let them know that you first heard about it here on the podcast. So that um, it's next weekend, right? Yes. Any day now. I'm gonna keep making that joke. Ribbon should, should we put a drive-through in for you? <laughs> Get a drive through tour. Kind of, kind of like the drive through zoos. You keep making that joke and it makes my eye twitch because um, <laughs> we, we've had, we've, we've got a couple of private events that we're going to be providing beer for. One in January, one possibly. Oh, hey, we're going to ask yeah. about stuff you guys want to pick. Um, and we're looking at doing another tap takeover in the spring. I think we're, we're talking about a couple of the different. By the way, help yourself, guys. Get more. We're talking with a couple of the different locations that we've discussed today on the podcast by doing a tad takeover, so be on the lookout for that announcement. But more importantly is, um, or more funnily, is during the takeover and all this other stuff we were doing, um, we had people walk up, hey, can you provide beer for this? It's going to be like in two weeks. And we have, <laughs> we've got all 20 gallons that we've spent the past like... I like a beer. <laughs> yeah. 
pouring our heart and soul into, like, you, you, you do know how long the fermentation process takes, right? Yeah. Uh, two homebrewers right here. You really yeah. appreciate it when it's July, 95 degrees, and you're like leaning over a, yeah. a burner turning a brown ale into a gosa. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's good that people want your beer at their events. No, no, it, it is fantastic, and it, and it breaks mm. my heart to have to tell people no, but that's, you know, that's the logistics of how things work sometimes. But also just the sketchy legal issues like i can't really yeah. sell you a bunch of homebrew for your wedding or whatever no, right <laughs> we, we say our loss is your gain you know we spend the money it gets our name out there yeah so we oh, provide yeah. it um but uh, the money we made off selling our souvenir cups for liam's we're able to buy some better equipment from ss Absolutely. brew tech so we've got um some stainless steel we have a 15 Good gallon stuff. kettle and then we got the 20 gallon match tone so i saw the nice. pictures we're nice. actually using it tomorrow you guys have social media instagram facebook yes. everything yeah. else let's do that um go ahead and, and follow big oak and what did you guys say the kickstarter was hopefully going to be kicking off looking for maybe february, february. okay so be looking for that what's your uh, um, social media handles so it's at big uh, for instagram it's at big underscore oak underscore brewing okay um, and then Facebook, you can just search Big Oak Brewing and, and find it. That if you way. already have Anta Broom on Instagram or Facebook, you can find Big Oak from there because we've tagged them in lots of stuff. Or just search for Big Oak. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people ask about this stuff, and I'm like, do you have Google? <laughs> search for Big Oak Brewing. <laughs> <laughs> go, to, go to Instagram and type Big Oak Brewing. That's why probably I, the only one. That's why our fans love us so much. <laughs> hey, do you got Big Oak? Do you have Google? <laughs> I've had, uh, it takes as much energy to write. I've had uh, at big underscore oak underscore Bruin. I've had some beer, so I start to get mean. What, what, what did mean that joke Danny. Joke say? Mean Danny. Mean Next Danny. month we might have sour Carl. I hope we have sour I Carl. I hope we have sour Carl. So oh. wait, if you do the mead special in uh, January, does that mean you become mead Danny? <laughs> oh man, they're coming uh, out. Get them some pop tarts. Man. Yeah, get them a lot of pop Popeyes. Tarts. Uh, so don't forget about us on social hey, media. One thing I forgot to mention is we talked to um, at Sweetgrass. Ian was telling us about they have a thing called Hoppy New Year. Oh yeah, which sounded like an awesome event where he fills all the tap with great, crazy hoppy beers. So be looking for that and at uh, Sweetgrass. He also said that he was going to get some Nitro Founders um, breakfast out. breakfast out. Here pretty soon. He may Which already have, have it. At, I think they already have it. it. Yeah. Because yeah. they have it at Craft If they on still draft. have that, you want to go check that I out. I had it at Craft on Draft. It's probably awesome. delicious. It's awesome. Um, we got to remember to mention Hoppy New Year next month, too. Yeah, we will. For sure. Um, but go to Liam's. Go to Sweetgrass. Definitely hit up Five Points. Um, they're, they're great people. They deserve your business, especially on Small Business Saturday or if today's Tuesday, Small Business Tuesday or What's today? Thursday? Small business Thursday. Saturday. Today? Today is small business Saturday. I'm so confused. But he's making the point if you don't, if you're listening Thank to the podcast you. later, then that becomes a I small business. I need somebody to explain what I say half the time. I need a Ryan translator. Exactly. On staff. Um, so also don't what's forget our... about uh, Daniel Opal. Oh, yes. Opal Design. If you need a, a graphic person, he's amazing. And uh, please, 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 please support us on Patreon. Uh, we, we had two, but... One of them stopped. That's okay. He's the only here. Mm -hmm. Probably going to listen to the podcast. He was just being a nice guy. Yeah. And my mom, please support us on Patreon. P A T R E A O N. P A T R E O N. Or if you Patreon. don't, if you don't got a lot of money. Google. Um, <laughs> forget what Danny just said. If you don't got a lot of money, um, subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Yes. Subscribe um, on iTunes. Rank us. YouTube. Or is it rate us. Rate. Rate, rate us. Right. Um, and Stitcher. And follow us different places, and let us know if there's something. If you got a beer, who's got a beer question for Mean Danny? Who wants to get put down by Mean Danny about beer? What's your favorite beer? <laughs> He's gonna get mad. I don't drink beer. No. Uh, lately, aggressive I've Danny. been really into uh, low alcohol hoppy beers. You so, like, session. I should. I would love to. Uh, like I said, on tap, I have a 5% uh, or so mosaic pale ale. It's actually a little old at this point. I don't drink as much as I used to, long story, uh, and sours. But I also love super hoppy beers and imperial stouts, barrel-aged imperial stouts. The two beers that were my transition beers, like we talked about Newcastle, I was a weirdo in that I didn't like beer at all. Mainly because I had only experienced Bush Light, Keystone Light, 
Natty lights. I'm from the Midwest. Natty lights not a thing where I'm from. Bush light keeps on going. Oh, it's yeah, a that's thing. All they have. That kind of stuff. They yeah, have. I learned that. No, they have moved, natty light. No, they have it. It's just not a thing. When I moved to Tallahassee and I started natty working at Proof, like the thing in Tallahassee. it's no, like started, an imaginary friend in the Midwest. It's I started, there, but not. I started working at Proof, and it was like everyone was getting all the college kids were natty light, natty light, natty light from the store. They don't even have their store anymore. Uh, and I was like, why is this so popular? Anyway, so I just had had drank that garbage and I didn't like it. And then weirdly enough, like the two beers that converted me were super intense, insane beers. Like the first t- couple of beers I remember really changing my life were Dockfish Head 90 Minute and uh, Goose Island Bourbon County Stout. So it wasn't like, oh, I had a raspberry wheat and then, or I had a Newcastle and I kind of trans. It was like, no, I suddenly had like the most big, flavorful beers in the world. And I was like, wow, this is beer? Oh my God, but I'm blessed because, uh, blessed, what a stupid thing to say. Hashtag blessed. I'm lucky because, uh, (laughs) (laughs) me and Danny. (laughs) There's a hashtag. I have an older brother that's eight years older than me. In in other words, he was way ahead of the curve. And so he's the one that got me into craft beer. Good answer. He was like, hey, you don't like beer. It's because you're drinking the wrong crap. Nice, succinct answer. (laughs) (laughs) What does that mean, Ryan? Um, you get to say five words. I like some craft beer. <laughs> what, what? No, what was your, what's your um, favorite? What are your favorite beers? Fat Tire was probably the first like craft beer. I grew up in Denver, so Fat Tire was all around. The first like weird craft beer I remember blowing my mind was this smoked beer by Hanbergit from Norway. Really? called norwegian wood and it was like drinking this delicious campfire and i remember thinking like this is beer and then that same trip i had la foley by new belgium again and that was like my first sour beer and i was pretty much converted and that's how i really got into craft beer you didn't drink the fire at the playground did you nope what do you like now though what are your favorite types of beers now the conversation sort of sours i do like sours i'm with you i like Good session, hoppy, fruity it's IPAs. Like a byproduct of living in the hot sun. Yeah, I like Berliner Weisses for the same reason. I always have hoppy beers and Berliner Weisses like, on tap. And then I like the beer nerd beers, like barrel aged stuff and sours. So, but if you have another question, that was a good question. If you have a question for Danny and me, um, email us. You can find our email. I think it's Antibroom. Antibroom at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Com- tweet us, on Facebook. Facebook. Tweet. Maybe we'll start a new segment. Twitter. Um, and just let us know you're out there listening. Yeah. And Facebook, then, Antibroom. Twitter, at Antibroom. Instagram, at Antibroom. It's all at Antibroom. Definitely um, hit up Big Oak because it's going to be next week here and we're going to be ready for it. And they have a cool and active Instagram page as well. So you yep. find them there and Facebook. And then uh, as my final um, remi- uh, reminder, always fiesta responsibly. You know, be of age, don't drink and drive, no legal limits, all those disclaimers. And let's thank the uh, Big Oak guys for being here. Yes. One final cheers. cheers. Thank you for having us. Hey, hey our cheers. pleasure. Woo. Thanks for bringing beer, too. Yeah. All right. Everybody, have a fantastic holiday time. We are going to try to do a very merry anti broom Christmas in the next couple weeks because Danny – doesn't live here during Christmas time. So uh, be looking for us in the next couple of weeks. We'll post on Facebook when we have a date. Long story short, we haven't solidified a date for topic for December. Waiting to hear back from maybe a brewery. And also if we can get our friend Sour Carl on Sour to be Carl. the craft beer Grinch for December. Craft beer Grinch. Anyways, have a wonderful day. We will see you all later. And thanks for listening. Peace out.